Good morning. I remember the first time I, I heard Matthew three uh, five three. I was like, what? That doesn't even make sense. It says, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God. And the beauty of that is a dependence upon God. And understanding, I think of in James it says, when you bow down before the Lord and admit your dependence on him, he will lift you up and give you honor. It's a place of humility, of of an understanding, I used to live my life apart from God. Now I'm coming to a place of a submitted life to God. And then, you know, it says, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. When we become dependent upon God and we trust in Him fully with our lives, is where we experience the beauty of relationship with God. We experience the fruit of the Spirit. We have peace and joy and contentment because we're no longer living apart from God. I'm no li longer living from that place of I am my own. I am His. I'm a child of God. Those who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. Romans 8.14 So that's what it's about. And what is the thing that gets us going in, in that direction? It's for Christ's love compels us. It's his love that compels us into relationship with him. But if we think of it, we think of it just as religion, that's where we miss it. We miss the beauty of relationship. We miss the beauty of who he is and what he's done. And being able to be free of that bondage of self. But in him something beautiful happens. Um, just a story. I was going to goes with it but so uh, a couple weeks back I was in Bakersfield and I finished with an account and uh, as as I was finishing up there was a kid sitting on like a, a planter box a little bit away and he was wearing all white white shoes white pants white shirt um, white hat and he uh, he said hey do you are you guys hiring and I said, no, we aren't. And I got in my truck, and then I just saw his face, and I saw that he he looked down. So I felt God saying, you know, um, you should go talk to him. So I got out, and I went over and started talking to him. And I spent about 10 minutes with him and just, you know, shared the love of God with him. And he said, you know, I used to, I, I'm a believer, but I've kind of lost my way, and I just encouraged him and prayed with him and shared the love of God with him and what his created value was and the beauty of everything that that God did in my life I I, I shared with him you know and it was weird because uh, <clears throat> he came over by the truck at that point and right at that time another kid came up and he goes um, you know you want to buy some weed to me? And the kid goes, no, he's a man of God. And while that other kid was standing there that just tried to, uh, he had tears in his eyes and he said, I just want you to know that you don't know how much I needed this today. And that I could say with everything in my heart that I love you. And man, you know, see, and that's what I believe what we're supposed to be as Christians is we're supposed to empty ourselves of ourselves to be filled with the love of God. And then wherever we go, we're able to be that expressive love of God. But if self is in the way, I don't get out of my truck, whether that be fear of sounding stupid, whether that be I'm busy thinking of other things I need to do in my life. But the beautiful thing about the early church, it was, it was called the way. So they were not only following the path of Jesus, it was the pattern of his life. So a lot of times in religion, we can focus on people's behavior, but we miss the heart of Jesus. We miss the compassion and the love for others and the desire to help them become free of that bondage, whatever it is they're in. At the root of it, it's the bondage to self. Because we come in trying to justify and glorify our own lives, but we become free when we get to that point of understanding who we are and whose we are. And then we become free. I hope you have a blessed day today. Um, 
Talk to you later.